The F-88 Ostire rifle and the F-89 Minami light support weapon have been chosen for employment by the Australian Army for their sturdiness, accuracy and versatility in action. These weapons were chosen above all others after an elaborate series of scientific tests and examinations covering all climatic conditions. Both weapons utilise the new international NATO standard 5.56mm ammunition. This is not a scientific test, nor a test of accuracy, but purely a demonstration of the penetrative effects of the weapons on different building media. Because both weapons exhibit similar muzzle velocities, not all of the target demonstrations will be duplicated. The demonstration should also act as a guide for soldiers taking cover from enemy rifle fire. The walls and other media assembled represent cover that a soldier could expect to encounter during normal urban and low-level operations. The Ostire will fire first. For the first demonstration, three types of steel plate have been chosen. Target number one is a set of five three millimeter thick mild steel plates separated by air gaps of 10 millimeters. Target two is a single mild steel plate 10 millimeters thick. And target three is another set of five mild steel plates, this time two millimeters thick and separated by air gaps of 10 millimeters each. The firer will be firing on the targets from left to right. Let's examine the results. On target number one, the round has penetrated four of the five three millimeter steel plates. Target number two, the single 10 millimeter steel plate has also been penetrated. And on target number three, the round has penetrated all five of the two millimeter steel plates. During urban operations in rural areas, weatherboard buildings and sheds may still be encountered. This is a simple, unlined, single weatherboard construction that should be indicative of timber doors as well. All six shots have passed through, with the weatherboard offering very little resistance to the 5.56 millimeter ammunition. The next target is a standard single brick wall, 115 millimeters thick. The first six shots damage the front of the wall, but only one shot penetrates on the mortar course. The tenth shot punches out the back of the wall and all up the ten shots leave a hole about 60 millimeters wide. Target number six is a double brick cavity wall with a 25 millimeter cavity between the two 115 millimeter layers. The first 10 shots damage the front layer and partly penetrate the rear layer. But it takes the 12th to 15th shots to blow the 10 millimetre hole through both layers. A standard concrete block or Besser block wall is the next target and note that the internal cavities have been filled with mortar.
Whilst shots six and seven passed through on the mortar course, it took 10 or 11 shots to penetrate the wall fully. Target eight is a single layer sandbag wall. Apart from the fourth shot passing through, the bags have not been penetrated. Opening up the bag reveals the remains of the other nine rounds, about two-thirds of the way into the bag and in fragments. Target nine is a 300 millimeter log that has been freshly cut and therefore represents the consistency of a tree of similar dimensions. The greenness of the timber has meant that none of the 10 shots have fully penetrated the tree. A 20 litre drum full of water offers similar resistance to the human body. The first round fired at the car door shatters the window wound down inside. The following two shots also have no trouble penetrating. The first target that the Minimai encounters is the single layer brick wall. After 20 rounds, the firing pattern of the Minimai has created two holes in the wall, approximately 150 millimetres each in diameter. Target number two for the Minimai is the double brick cavity wall. Apart from one round passing through both layers on the mortar course, after 20 rounds against the double brick wall, the Minimai has penetrated the first layer, but not completely through the second. The average penetration depth is approximately 150 millimetres. Here, the centre of the concrete block below the black square has been chosen as the aiming mark, as it is more representative of the structural density of the wall. After 20 rounds, significant damage is sustained to the front of the concrete block wall, but nothing at the rear. It takes 40 rounds from the Minimai to penetrate the concrete block wall completely leaving a hole about 130 millimetres in diameter. Target four for the Minimai is a double layer sandbag wall. After 20 rounds, no impression has been made on the rear of the wall.
A further 30 rounds also have no effect on the rear of the wall and little impact on the front of the wall either. Due to the size and shape of the target and the firing pattern of the minimi, it will be difficult to ensure that the rounds hit the middle of this target. After 35 rounds, there are only a couple of penetrations of the 300mm log, and neither of these were through the thickest part of the tree. This demonstration gives a good indication of the considerable hitting power of both the Ostire and the Minimi at normal battle ranges. It should also act as a guide when choosing cover against enemy fire. Australian soldiers can feel comfortable in the knowledge that their weapons are at the leading edge of technology and have been chosen after stringent testing for their durability, versatility and reliability in any battle situation.